During the first war of Indian independence in 1857, the Britishers constructed cellular jail in the Andaman Islands. The isolation of these islands from the mainland ensured that once a convict was brought here, there would be no escape. Ever since, the islands are referred to as the Black Waters of India, or popularly known as Kalapani. As the influx of people into the islands continued, it slowly transformed into a union territory. The Andaman Islands as we know it today is an archipelago consisting of 572 islands, of which only 38 islands are inhabited. It is also home to India's only volcanic island, the Barren Island. These archipelagic islands are nestled in the Bay of Bengal, with the Indian Peninsula to the west and Burma to the north and east. While most of the islands are part of the Andaman and Nicobar Union Territory of India, a small number in the north belong to Burma. The original inhabitants of these islands have dwindling populations, but continue to exist amidst the so-called islanders, the ones who migrated to this distant territory. Today, majority of the locals in the Andamans are a part of the local fishing industry which constitutes a significant part of India's economy. Andaman should be called the fish basket of India because we have a huge potential of harvesting fish from the Andaman waters. Most people are not aware that the exclusive economic zone of Andamans is fully one third of that of the whole country. Jungli Ghat, the hub of fisheries in the islands, is a small fishing village close to Port Blair. This is a major place, a big area, where all the commercial activities, like the trawlers are owned, brought there. There is an exclusive jetty for fish landing, and uh, even processing it, uh, there is a processing industry over there. While fishing remains the main occupation of the locals, the tourism industry here is largely responsible for the sustenance of the Andamans. First and foremost, what people know Andaman is about uh, Kalapani. So, cellular jail is a kind of landmark which people visit. Second most important thing which tourists look forward here is the good beaches, pristine, virgin beaches, white sand, and a lot of cleanliness with uh, absolutely deep, deep, greenish blue water. It is a matter of immense pride for the Andaman Islands that Radhanagar Beach in Havelock Island has been voted as one of the top 10 beaches of the world by Time magazine. The new area which is the major attraction is water sports and adventure uh, water tourism. Where primarily is jet ski, scuba diving, snorkeling, sea walk, Banana like, sofa like, now parasailing is coming, a lot of things like this. While the Directorate of Tourism plans to further develop the tourism industry, one cannot argue that the corals along the islands continue to be the ultimate attraction for tourists. Tourism becoming one of the, the major um, economic factors in the Andamans is definitely both impacting the reef but also sort of survives off the reef. The coral uh, reefs around the islands are uh, fringing type and uh, if you fr go from land to the coast to the sea, it's, it's very rich. So we've got rich mangrove, we've got rich tropical forest and then rich coral reef ecosystem. Each big coral that you see underwater is made up of these millions of tiny individual organisms called polyps. So it's basically a colony of a lot of these teeny polyps. To put it crudely, the coral reefs in the sea are like the maternity ward in our hospitals. The fishlings are all produced there. The juveniles, they take shelter in a coral reef to survive against the predators because that world is full of predators. The destruction of coral reefs is a major cause for concern in these islands. Natural disasters like the 2004 earthquake and tsunami caused severe damage to this ecosystem. And now, as they strive to recover from the incident, their existence continues to be threatened by several unusual threats. One of these threats is agriculture in the region. The silt collected from the agricultural soil 
runs off into the ocean, settling on the delicate corals and blocking their sunlight. Things like uh, having a lot of paddy cultivation somewhere upstream can bring in a lot of nutrients into the sea. And, and in reef ecosystems, usually the water contains very little nutrient in it. And that's why it's transparent. So as soon as you bring the nutrient comes in, a lot of these tiny algae that grow in the water, these microscopic ones, just start exploding. Their populations just explode, and that can lead into problems with visibility. Light doesn't penetrate, the water becomes murky. So. Another unlikely threat to the corals comes from the illegal infrastructure, primarily from road construction. They used to mine coral, live coral, crush them, use them as stone aggregates, mix it with cement and uh, sand and make it. There are tens of kilometers of road laid on coral uh, substrate. The armed forces unknowingly engage in activities that place the existence of these corals under grave danger. Major coral destruction seems to take place because of target practice by the Navy. You know, they uh, have to fire their marine guns at some target. So frequently what they will do is any uh, uninhabited tiny island where there is nothing much to destroy from their point of view, they will do that. And those are usually areas with very rich in coral. There is a place inside Port Blair City, uh, it's called Brukshabad, uh, which is adjacent to a beach called Carbines Cove. And there we had a lot of coral colonies and it is like uh, the administration, Andamanikur administration decided that there should be a dumping yard. Large-scale coral destruction has been taking place in the formerly biodiversity-rich coral settlement in Corbin's Cove, an island near Port Blair. Uh, since that area is having a lot of rocks and I mean granites and things like that, the, those places were allotted as stone quarries. So what happens is when it rains, it brings all the mud into the sea which flows still further, it keeps going and it uh, the silting destroys the coral and everything. The Port Blair municipality's decision to construct a dump yard in this region added to the dangers faced by the corals. Non-biodegradable garbage, such as plastic, is being emptied into the ocean, resulting in significant damage to the environment. Yes, plastic, पूरा वेस्टेज है प्लास्टिक बोतल है प्लास्टिक पेपर है सब कुछ है सब कुछ है पूरा किनारा से समतर में आ जाता है इसका बारम से आवा के पीछे कोई कोई जगह से आप देखने से मालूम हो जाएगा पूरा प्लास्टिक पड़ा है इसके पीछे फिश पूरा काटा है इसका पूरा काटे पूरा डेथ हो जाता नेचुरली डेथ हो जाता है प्लास्टिक है पीछे as an islander, I have taken a lot of initiative, written to all the officers in the administration, but there has been no action in this regard. Again, they have leased out all the quarry. They should have selected some other site because it's destroying the entire coastline. We have been working with the Pollution Control Board in some respects, um, at, uh, recommending management plans in terms of better disposal systems of garbage. It's easy to say that don't dump garbage in the sea, but the fact of the matter is the Andamans uh, the entire island group has no garbage disposal system as yet. While the locals blame the administration for the depletion of their most valued asset, the authorities claim that actions are being taken to conserve these beautiful creatures. We protect corals. So you are not supposed to collect or uh, destroy it. We don't use it for any other purpose. It's declared as a shield species. So if anyone is found, even collecting a small piece is liable to legal action. Most of the tourism here is based on diving and other coastal activities. So technically, the work we've been doing with the communities is to help them understand that overlap. The tourism really won't function without sustaining these reef systems. There are the linked issues, like the, the reef is very rich in what in, in animals and fishes and other life forms. Some of them are sought after by not our fishermen but by the fishers who come from outside the country. This brings us to the problem of poaching. Fishermen who hail from the neighbouring countries steal the livelihood of the local fishermen, causing a stir in Andaman's marine ecosystem. The Ministry of Agriculture, they have been issuing licence to trawlers. 
okay these trawlers are basically foreign trawlers but uh, there is a criteria that they should have a indian owner manning and operation is done by foreigners so uh, instead of uh, bringing the catch to the islands and then exporting what these people do is like straight away from mid uh, from the deep sea they transport it jo poachas aata hai thailand burma indonesia se aane ke baad un log kya karta hai ki hamara fisherman se attack karke boat ko bhi chhin ke leke chale jata hai kabhi kabhi aadmi ko jaan se bhi maar deta hai ye sab hum log administration ko bolne ke baad administration usko kya karwai nahi karta this alleged government negligence is adversely affecting the only livelihood of the local fishermen and in a way is facilitating the poachers government of india hum log ka itna ek cheez diya hai sab kuch rules and regulation follow karke hum log fishing ja rahe hain us log ke liye koi bhi rules and regulation nahi hai foreign boat log aata hai permission ek boat ke liye permission leke us log ek hi license mein jar boat kaam karte hai sara machhe leke jata hai उसमें हम लोग फिशरमैन वाला पहले पंद्रह नाटिकल में मिलता वाला मच्छी अभी अस्सी नाटिकल में जाने से भी नहीं मिलता है द लोकल फिशरमैन ब्लेम द अथॉरिटीज इन देयर इन एडिक्वेसी टू लीगलाइज एक्सपोर्ट्स व्हिच लीड टू द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ पोचिंग कंट्रीज लाइक इंडोनेशिया एंड म्यांमार शुड रिसीव लीगल एक्सपोर्ट्स इन ऑर्डर टू मीट द डिमांड फॉर दीस पर्टिकुलर फिशर्स हमारा जो देश नजदीक में जो भी है इंडोनेशिया थाईलैंड पटना है इनको जो भी उनको देश में जो मच्छी नहीं है क्योंकि हम लोग देश में आता है कि चोरी चोरी पाड़ के चोरी करके जाने के लिए वही मच्छी हम लोग उनका देश में एक्सपोर्ट करने से कुछ चोरी कम पड़े कम होएगा अभी हमारे जो एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इधर क्या करता है कि उनका जो देश में एक्सपोर्ट करने के लिए वो परमिट नहीं देता है देर इज अ मूव दैट इफ समी हैज टू मेक सच अ प्रॉफिट वाई नॉट द लोकल पीपल दम सेल्स बट इफ आई नो दी ministry of environment and you know uh, it's very hard to get something denotified once it is notified i don't feel that you need to have a blanket ban on a species all you need to do is have a, a regulatory mechanism where you have a sustainability in it and and by just by declaring it protected what happens is people do it illegally species endemic to the andamans are the targets of these poachers the constant poaching of these species spells a dark cloud over this rich center of flora and fauna band items na jaisa crocodile hai jo smuggling hota hai yahan pe ye log wo karte hain plus yahan ka sea cucumber utha kar ke le jaate hain sea corals le jaate hain hamare red corals hai yahan pe to ye log ye sab ko le kar ke jaate hain yahan se hamare jitne bhi environment ka jo balance hai pani ke andar ka disturb kar we presently have more than 1000 people who are undergoing jail or jail terms as imprisonment or during trial in spite of these numbers locals are victimized by these poachers on a daily basis rao a local fisherman went ahead for his day's work oblivious to what was awaiting him he was robbed of his boat and equipment off havelock island the so called tourist haven in the andamans the authorities were not much of a help तीन घंटा रास्ता अपना पुलिस स्टेशन में हम कंप्लीट किया कंप्लीट करने के बाद उन लोग कुछ एक्शन नहीं लिया कुछ ढूंढने के लिए कोई नहीं आया वो आने के बाद यहाँ स्टेशन को कंप्लीट किया था सेक्रेटर ऑफिस गया था एल जी के पास भी गया था लेटर पॉलिस कब किया था आज तक एक पैसा मिल नहीं वो घूम घूम कर परेशान हो गया वहाँ के ऊपर ऐसे ही नुकसान हो गया था द जरा प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट पार इज द फिशरमैन फ्रॉम एंटरिंग द ट्राइबल पैसेज विच इज होम टू स्कूल फिश However, no law can prevent the poachers from exploiting the area. The loss of livelihood to the poor fishermen can be caused by this unjust restriction. यहाँ जरवा का एरिया में जब यहाँ हमारे यहाँ से जब से अब से जरवा प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट लगा है, यहाँ से हमारे जो फिशर बन जाते हैं, जो एक्सपोर्ट फिशर्स होते हैं, वो उसी रास्ते से गुजरने के बाद कुछ दूर जाने से कुछ क्वांटिटी में मिलता है, जिसमें इन लोगों को कुछ अर्निंग्स होता है, उसको भी बंद कर दिया जरवा प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट लगा करके उस एरिया से आपको एंटर करके भी जाना है हमारा फिशरमैन को इसमें बहुत दिक्कत होता है वी रियली हैव नो आईडिया ऑफ फाइंडिंग आउट इन अ ईयर वी कैच अबाउट 500 मैन 500 ऑफ द पोचर्स एंड वी डोंट नो हाउ मेनी आर कमिंग एंड गेटिंग अवे विद इट स्कॉट फ्री सो इफ यू सी द एक्सटेंट ऑफ दीस आइलैंड्स इट इज आई मीन 800 किलोमीटर्स फ्रॉम द टॉप टू द बॉटम एंड लिटिल आइलैंड्स हियर एंड देयर इट इज 
very hard to even even with their surveillance by the coast guard even with the coast guard and the navy ships outside even with our interceptors moving around in coastal areas it is not a foolproof uh, system and it is not that we can stop each one of them coming in while the authorities struggle to combat the menace of poaching it continues to disrupt the ecosystem the process of poaching is a well organized crime the poachers enter the andaman waters from the northeast the navigator guides the poachers to the hunting grounds of the top predators where the fishing nets placed under the vessel trap the sharks the poachers then escape the scene of the crime leaving little behind if you remove top predators like sharks groupers snappers what will happen is other fish lower down the food chain such as either the middle level uh, predators or even herbivores their numbers will start increasing in the absence of these fish let's say parrot fish parrot fish also graze on coral if parrot fish numbers increase coral populations decline it's called a trophic cascade the scientific term for it basically if you remove one organism from the top of the food chain everything else below it on the food chain starts cascading downwards to an absolutely un absolutely degraded system the poachers resort to high tech equipment and dangerous measures which are beyond the reach of local fishermen but are easily accessible to the poachers what they did they used an autocall ied you know improvised explosive device a bomb sort of thing and throw it in the water so the concussion wave would kill a lot of fish and then it'll float up so you collect it you have a huge number of fish without really putting in much effort when the local local fishermen when they go to fish they don't carry weapons with them when you compare uh, with the foreign poachers i mean the myanmar is they are they are well equipped they have guns with them they have swords and things like that it is like they come to steal so they are well prepared while it is clear that the problem persists one needs to dwell upon the reasons that encourage poaching crocus which is this shellfish uh that's used the shell is used to produce mother of pearl which is used in uh, cosmetics and generally ornaments and stuff like that sea cucumber which is dried and eaten in various asian countries and sharks because the shark fin soup has a high market value in the beginning they used to look like beggars but now they have much better uh, boats they have diving suits they have oxygen tanks so it is obviously a very lucrative kind of a uh, occupation contrary to recent occurrences the concerned authorities remain optimistic of the fact that this poaching racket can be put to an end so the fishermen of course are are our eyes and ears i mean they are the ones who tell us that i saw a boat which was not a andamanese boat they can make out over a large distance if they take a look they know that this is an andamanese boat this is not that's where the coast guard and navy come as a first and second line of defense then marine police we have created especially and now they have been given vessels which are fast moving vessels and they have been trained in diving and other things so they are well versed with the marine thing so that has happened in last few years and then comes the forest department and we look after the the land site and close to that where it's actually there well naturally we are getting more boats uh, the navy is getting stronger the army is getting stronger in this area we are we are going to get better and better but how much it will deter them i don't know because it seems the profits are in lakhs and lakhs i mean if one trip one successful trip gets somebody 40 lakhs then uh, he is going to keep trying sea cucumber sells for rupees 8000 per plate across the asian market this tells us how profitable the poaching racket is 2000 square kilometer of andaman land is covered by corals since 2010 56% of coral reefs have depleted That was the unexplored and misunderstood Andamans, an enigma to the world.